Okay, number 45 wants us to draw out and sketch the region created by y equals 2 root x and y equals x, and we're revolving all this about the vertical line x equals negative 2. Okay, so 2 root x is a square root function that starts at the origin here. Not that we care that much, but the slope between the vertex and the next point is 2. So I'd be going up 2 and right 1. Okay, so 2 root x is a little bit wider, I should say a little bit taller than a normal square square root function. Okay, that's that. y equals x, of course, is just a line going through here, everybody, at a 45 degree angle. So, okay, we get the line y equals x there, got it. And that creates, yep, just like we hoped, one little region, kind of looks like a slivered cashew right there, or a slivered almond, that's what I'm thinking of. Um, looks kind of similar to what we call a circular segment created by an arc and a chord in a circle, but nobody cares. Okay, that's what we have right there, and we are revolving this thing about the vertical line x equals negative 2, which is right here. So this region is spinning kind of horizontally around this vertical line. So I'll draw the 180 degree reflection of this thing, which, okay, just trying to get a sense for the scope here. Eh, it's going to look something like that. And this side is going to be curved a little bit. Yeah. Certainly not perfect, but probably good enough. So what are we drawing here, guys? It kind of looks like we have a region that's going to look like this on the bottom, and on the top, it's going to be pretty open, looking something like that. So it's another one of these weird shapes that's kind of like a bowl, but with a hole cut all the way through it. Okay, two big distinctions to make. First of all, dx or dy. Anytime we're going about a vertical line, this is going to be a dx problem. Gotcha. Which is good because both of these equations are already solved for y. If this was a dy problem, I'm sorry, guys, I'm wrong about that. <laughs> Never mind. All right, since we're going horizontally here, the slices always go perpendicular to that axis of revolution. This is a dy problem, which is bad for just the reason that I said it was good. Both those equations are solved for y. We're going to need them solved for x. Shoot. All right. So actually, this one already is solved for x. There you go. x is equal to y. This one right here, let's take a look. We'd get a square root of x is equal to, that would be a 1 half y. And then when we squared both sides here, we'll get x is equal to a 1 fourth y squared. All right. And that's what that one will look like. Okay, so the two equations are now solved for x in terms of y. The other distinction we needed to make a while ago, circles or washers. Now again, this isn't a choice. If you have a gap between your yellow region here and then the axis of revolution, and we certainly do have a gap all along here, we've got to be doing washers. So let me switch back to blue here and let's get started. Area of a washer is going to be given to us by pi times capital R squared minus lowercase r squared. We've got to figure out functions here for capital R and for lowercase r, both in terms of y. So I don't like where I drew those red lines there just a second ago. Sorry about that. All right, guys. So here we go. Big R, I'll start with that one, starts at the axis of revolution, goes through the first curve and all the way to the second. So big R is going to be defined by its right border, which is this linear function, minus its left border over here, which is the line x equals negative 2. So the right function is x equals y minus the left function, which is x equals right here, negative 2. So that, of course, just becomes y plus 2. And that's as much as you can do for big R. Little r starts at the axis of revolution and goes until it hits the first curve and stops there. And the first curve, I should say the one on the right, is x equals a 1 quarter y squared minus, and what stops it on the left? There's the negative 2 yet again. So that's going to give us a little r expression of 1 fourth y squared plus 4. Not perfect, but that's what we've got. So area now we can express as a function of y, and that's going to be pi times, all right, here we go, big R squared, so that's y plus 2 quantity squared minus little r squared, which is 1 quarter y squared plus 4 little r squared. Whew. And guys, 
That is a mess right there. I am not going to bother trying to simplify that expression in any way, shape, or form. We're going to leave it like that and let the calculator do all the hard work for us. So, all we have left to do right now is come up with our volume expression, which hopefully isn't going to be too tough. Volume is going to equal the definite integral we said taken with respect to y. And guys, I said this before, let me go ahead and do it. Since this a of y expression is really, really ugly, and it would take me kind of a long time to write it here, why don't I just cut to the chase and write a of y right there? As long as you've clearly labeled, hopefully somewhere close on your paper to where you're writing this, as long as you've clearly labeled what a of y is, that's fine. You don't need to write it all again. The only thing I'm missing are my limits of integration, lowest and highest values of y in this region. And we can tell fairly quickly here uh, that this region begins on the bottom at y equals 0. What I don't think we know yet, though, guys, is where this thing ends. So let's do a little math on that, shall we? Why don't we take those two equations right here, x equals y and x equals 1 quarter y squared, and set them equal to each other. 1 quarter y squared is equal to y. I bet if we just thought about this for a minute, I think we could come up with the answer pretty quickly, but let's do it the right way. Let's bring the y over to the left. 1 quarter y squared minus y equals 0. Let's factor out a y. 1 quarter y minus 1 is equal to 0. Here, you'd get y equals 0, which we already knew from that point right there. But then, hmm, 1 quarter y minus 1 equals 0, so that equals 1. Multiply by 4, and you get y equals 4. That's the y coordinate at this point right here, which is our upper limit of integration. So, whoa, 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 what am I doing here? All right, gotcha. So the lower limit is going to be 0. The upper limit was going to be 4. The challenge now is, can I type this ugly a of y function into my calculator correctly? That remains to be seen. So since I'm including the, the, the whole a of y in the middle right there, I'm not going to put the pi out in front. I'll hit menu 43 and just do a definite integral from 0, we said, up to 4. And now, our a of y expression, this contains the pi that I left out before. So I'll put the pi there. And starting a set of parentheses now, big R needs its own set of parentheses. So I'm putting a double right there. And it was y plus 2 quantity squared. All right, so let's go with that. y plus 2, close the parentheses, and square that. So there's big R squared, minus, now another set of parentheses to start little r squared, 1 quarter y squared plus 4. So let me write that out, 1 quarter, and then a y squared, and then a plus 4 at the end of that. Do I have that right? 1 quarter y squared plus 4, and now we need to square that quantity of little r. Okay, oop, 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 nope, not there. So let's close that parenthesis there. That's what I wanted. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me, although it is a mess. We're going to integrate all of this with respect to y. And survey says there, wow, this really ugly number, and it's negative, which makes me think I've typed something in incorrectly here. So let me go back and take a look at what we had going on right here, guys. And I just want to make sure one more time now that that integrand is of a of y is correct. So let's see, if I set all of that up right, we had big R squared, we had little r squared. Okay, and big R was going to be that. So it should have been pi, integral of y plus 2 quantity squared, and then a minus, in parentheses, then a 1 quarter y squared plus 4. So 1 quarter y squared plus up oh, the 4 squared was my mistake right there, guys. I can see it now. Now, how can I get there without deleting this whole thing? So if I just got rid of that, 1 quarter y plus 4, what if I just made that to the first power? Hmm. Okay. Enter. Okay, let's edit that, and let me go back, and that should not have been a 4 squared, so I think I can just, I'll tell you what, I'll put a 1 there, and I still ended up with a negative answer here. So 1 quarter y squared plus 4, close the parentheses, and then square that. Let me pause this for a second, guys. I'll try to figure out what's going on.